In this video, I'll show you how to price items correctly using WooCommerce measurement calculator. This applies to you if you're selling items such as fabrics, building material, tiling and more. Essentially, you can set prices based on a surface area, a volume or any other non-standard metrics. With that being said, let's get straight into it. For example, here the customer can enter in their measurements. They can actually go ahead and choose some extra options as well. So let's go ahead and test this out. I'm currently pricing this particular blind by the square meter and I'll show you the formula in a second as well. So let's say 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters, which is one square meter. We're charging a fixed price of $55 per square meter, right? So the customer enters in their measurements. They can choose whether they want the fitting type to be exact or if they want it to have a slight recess. And later on as well, I can show you how we can tweak the formula based on this option. So if they want it exact, then maybe we want to add a 10% buffer, for example, right? If they want it recess, then maybe we want to slightly adjust the pricing, right? To accommodate both needs. Okay, so we can choose the fitting type we can choose um, any additional upgrades for example we can choose the standard option which is a non-cost option or we can choose this chrome finish i've got the images the wrong way around but nevertheless it's an additional 15 dollars. and in here we're adding a additional upsell right so for example but we can guarantee the fit if they choose to opt in for this order bump right and then when we scroll down we can see the grand total and the customer can add it to their basket and go ahead and check out as usual okay so if you want to create a similar setup on your woocommerce store the first step is to head over to aovup.com go ahead and download the aovup product add-ons plugin i'll leave a link in the description below and with that being said let's head over to our dashboard Assuming you've downloaded the AOV up product add-ons plugin. So the next step is to go ahead and create our product and then we'll add our custom measurement formula to that particular product. So we'll just head over to products and then add new. Since I've already created one, I'll quickly show you my settings and then we'll move on to creating the measurement formula. So this is this curtains product which I showed in the intro it's essentially just a simple product pretty standard stuff so we've got the name we've got a price here I've set the price to zero the main thing is just make sure you set this to a simple product and then we can just add any images and a category right so with that out of the way let's go ahead and customize our measurement formula okay so now we'll just head over to AOV up and in product add-ons Okay, in your case, you'll go ahead and create your first option set. Since I've already created one, I'm just going to click on this one here to edit it. Okay, so next we just need to give it a name. It's just for internal purposes. So then we just get to choose which product we want this to apply to. For example, we can set this to apply to a specific product. And then let's search for our curtain product here. Okay, so it's this one. Now let's scroll down and let's add our measurement fields, right? So in our example, we've got our width and height field. So let's go ahead and add those. So we'll just click add new option and then we'll select number, all right? And then we can say measurement. Okay, and then we can create the fields that we need, right? So if you need a width field, you can add it here and then we can just add more fields as well, right? So for example, the length, maybe we also want to add a depth field, right? So essentially you just want to customize this to suit your requirement, right? So just add your fields. I'm going to click cancel. Well, before we cancel this, in our example, we're currently stacking the fields in our measurement sections next to each other. So to do so, we will click on design and display. And in here where it says options per row, we can just specify how much options we want per row. And then we can also adjust the grid as well. This is in percentage. So in my example, I've actually set it to be 60%. And when you're happy with everything, just hit save. Again, I'm just going to cancel this because I've already got it here. Okay. And then here we've got the fitting type. So this is just a radio option. So we can just click add field and then we'll click radio and we can add our label, select fitting type. Okay, so for the label, we can select exact and we can select recess as well. All right, and then for the pricing option, we can either set it to the price doesn't change or we can set the price to increase or decrease. Right in our example, we actually set the price to increase and then we just added a fixed amount here. Of $15 All right then you just hit save again I'm going to cancel it since I've already got this field created here and then next is our toggle option so this is just a image slash 
label option, right? So instead of creating a new one, so usually you just click add new and then you select label or image here. I'm just going to edit this one to show you how I've actually customized it, All right? So we've got the title, which is toggle. Then we've got our option here, which is standard. And then essentially I've just added a image here. We need to actually remove this and let's swap out these images. So this is a standard one. And here the price is set to don't increase. Let's click on this one, our Chrome option. So let's remove this image and let's swap it out for our Chrome toggle. All right, so in this case, the price does increase and it's a $15 option. So we just hit save. All right, and then finally, we've got our checkbox, which is this additional option here. So again, we just click add new field and then we'll select checkbox. Again, since I've already got it, I'm just going to go ahead and edit this one. Okay, and we need to change the copy in here because the price is actually... Okay, so in this case, I actually didn't add a title, right? And we just add the order bump straight away here. So this is the label and then it's a price increase of 998. All right, so let's hit save. All right, and now we'll go ahead and add our formula. Again, since I've already got it I'm here, I'm just going to edit it and show you going on okay so for the title and everything we can just leave it blank we can create multiple formulas as well okay so we'll just head down to where it says formula and then essentially it will automatically show you all the different fields that you've got in this option set for example we've got our width and then we've got our length and then my formula is pretty straightforward so i'm going to delete this and then we'll redo it okay so we just click on width and then it's times length Right, and then it's divided by 10,000. This is to give us the square meter. Okay, and then we times it by our price per square meter, which is $55. And essentially this is our formula. So we can just hit save. Again, I've already got it saved. <laughs> so we can just refresh this page and have a quick look at everything. Okay, so we can say 100, or in fact, let's say 200 by 100. Okay, and the price is being charged accordingly. Okay, so one other thing to note is, let's say, for example, we want to set a minimum width and a maximum width. Let's go ahead and do that now. So let's cancel this. Now let's navigate over to our number field. Let's edit the width and let's set a min and max value. So the minimum that our customer can purchase is 60 centimeters and then the maximum is 240. And then we'll do the same for the length as well. So let's enable this min max field so again, 60 and 240. Let's hit save. All right. And now let's refresh this page. OK, so let's try entering 10 and let's try doing 300. OK, when I try add it to cart here, we've got this notice letting them know that it needs to be a minimum of 60. So let's change this to 60 and let's try to add it to cart again. OK, and again here we're passing our 240 threshold. So we need to reduce this to under 240, right? We can say 230 and now we'll be able to add it to our basket. Ignore this number here. So I'm currently still testing out the formula just to make sure everything's working as it should. So things like this you won't see on your website, for example. I've just got this printed here to make sure everything's calculating as it should. Right? So for example, here we're just rounding it up. OK, and then one final bonus tip is, let's say, for example, we wanted to use a different formula based on the option that the user selected, right? So for example, if they chose exact or recess, maybe we want to calculate the price in a bit differently. And I'll quickly show you how you can do that now. So we'll head back over here. And then all we do is we'll just add a new formula, right? So we'll have two formulas on the go. I'm not even going to set the formula here, right? So I'm just going to show you how to conditionally trigger the formula. So we'll head over to conditional logic. Okay, so we'll enable this conditional logic. And then for the display rules, we'll say we only want to use this formula. So we only want to show this formula if all these rules apply. OK, and the rule is where it says select your fitting type. The customer chose recess, right? So we'll select this option here and then we'll say is selected. So this new formula that we created now will only trigger if the customer selected the recess option. And then essentially we can calculate our pricing differently based on the option that they've selected. And of course, you'd want to 
go ahead and edit this original formula to have it trigger right so we'll head over to conditional logic and then essentially it's the same sort of setup so we'd show it you've got two ways of doing it really so we can show it when a user selects exact right and then we'll say selected okay or we can even do it the reverse so we can say hide it if the user selects recess right and then just hit save like and subscribe for more videos like this and if you've got any questions leave it in a comment box